KD swag. So no one is concerned about Pat Myers coaching. Dotson and Green improved after getting away from him. How do you explain keeping him around? Well, what did Broderick Jones do this year? What did Dan Moore do this year? All right? When did we say that both of those dudes played really well? Or at least for Broderick, he played really well and played out of position. When you talk about Dan Moore, Dan Moore was not getting us killed. He was not the worst lineman out there for our team. Nah, Dan Moore played well at times. Um, James Daniels, say mile. I think the big thing was Mason Cole's accuracy with some of the snaps. I think we could have been better as a whole, but to me, I don't know. I don't I don't look at Pat Meyer as oh man, you seen what happened with Dyson and Green when they left, da da da. I was like, nah, I look at how Broderick played and why we all feel optimistic about Broderick. Did Broderick look terrible this year? Did Broderick get cooked? Was Broderick, you know, any of these things? Nah. And once again, he was not even playing his natural position. So that's the part where when I look at Pat Meyer, I'm like, I don't think he's an issue. I think if you get the right talent in there, man, he's fine. And I think that we're doing a good job with this draft of getting that talent in there. But um, but that's kind of how I look at it, man. But I can definitely understand, you know, your uh, approach to it. I would also say that even with Kendrick Green, that is a little bit smaller of a sample size in terms of him improving when he got away because he got hurt. He had, I think it was a handful of games. He did look good, but he got hurt. So in terms of the sustainability of what that would have looked like, I don't think that that's a fair comparison. And with Dotson, I mean, sure, Dotson is Dotson, but Dotson was good here. You know, so that's my thing, man. But yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a Pat Meyer issue personally, though. If you're gonna talk about Pat Myers versus Munchak, I'll take Munchak. But right, but Munchak is a former head coach. It's a different conversation. Yeah, who are we replacing right. Pat Myers with right now? That's the question. If it's Munchak, yeah. sure, I'm all for it. But, right, but I don't know if there's any hot offensive line candidates out there, yeah. offensive line coaching candidates out there right now yeah. to bring in that would be better. Unless you're going to get a former head coach or you get Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith's a former head coach, former offensive line. He got some of that in his pedigree. But once again, that's a former head coach that we're pulling from. And we have him in-house. Absolutely. And that's the part for me where I'm like, if I already have that in-house to go with this already in-house, am I really tripping on that position right now? Nah. And that's kind of why I was like, I don't think we got to like worry about Myers on that level. I think that for what he's going to be asked or what we're asking him to do, I definitely think that he's going to be plenty fine and definitely knows enough to do that type of stuff in terms of the detail level, just from conversations of talking with him. You know what I mean? So it's like, I do trust that part. Nadia Fox says, I think Matt Canada's scheme affected the O-line more than Meyer. Well, don't just think of the scheme quarterback play also because the timing, when we talk about the, just the depth of your drop, the consistency with the drops, and the different quarterbacks. That was one of the big things later in the year that some of the offensive linemen did complain about internally, where it was you're dealing with the difference of a Kenny dropping and how he might drop or how he might try to evade pressure. Then you deal with Mitch and how he drops and how he tries to evade pressure. And then you have Mason and how he would drop and how he would try to evade pressure and just the different depths in which their three-step, is your three-step really three-step? Is your three-step five? Or is your five-step really five? Or is your five-step seven? And those are all different things that the offensive line did have to deal with. Now, as we communicated today, it sounds like, oh, man, that's just lip service. But if they were to set it in the season, it's very legitimate. But now it's, all right, they got internal issues going on. Oh, man, they turn on the quarterback. It's like, nah, but that is the legitimacy of what they deal with in terms of the protection, the depth and the release and the quickness of the reach from that quarterback and these receivers have just as great an impact on the protection as those dudes trying to just win their one-on-ones based off of their pure talent and athleticism. So they did have some of that at play. But once again, the same way we would talk about Kenny, we say it's not always going to be perfect for the offensive line. It's not always going to be perfect. So you try to bring in the type of players that we say can rise above any variables. We felt like we've done that with quarterback. We felt like we've been doing that with offensive line. And then with this draft, we feel like we've also done that with the offensive line in terms of bringing in players that it doesn't always have to be right. But if we all on the same page, oh, we're going to be all right. 
that's the type of dudes you want to have out there. And I think that's what we're going to be putting out there. So we should see even more production in that unit. And in a year from now, we'll be like, dang, man, Pat Myers halfway straight, bro. People like Pat Myers because of the guys you're going to have working with him, man. This show is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. We talking about the top rated sportsbook and app in North America. I mean, we're I mean, we like to call them the GOAT, right? When we're talking about them, that's what they refer to as. And uh, not only do we talk about them, okay, we also come bearing good gifts. And that is by way of a promo code. So for all the new customers out there, man, when you first download the app, use the promo code MOTES. You make that initial deposit of $5, you will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly to use for potential, you know, wagers. That's a dope concept. You know, but we also know that the NBA playoffs are going on right now, and it is spicy, crazy action. Definitely like all that we're seeing out there, man. But if you want to get a little extra, you know, activation when you're watching the games, they also have the No Sweat SGP slash SGPX everyday bets going on for the NBA playoffs, all right? And that's for all customers as well. Pretty dope, pretty dope. But we also understand that, man, sometimes when you're having fun, you might have a little bit too much fun. And when you're having too much fun, you might develop a gambling problem. You might need some crisis counseling or even referral services. And for the people in New York, I mean, these are the numbers that you could text or dial. But for everybody else, the digits to dial are 1-800-GAMBLER. I said a one 800 gambler. 